Good morning, soldiers of the Most High God. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it because God has given us the power to choose. Amen? Power to choose. That's a good thing, isn't it? Oh, Master, did you get refreshed already? Yes. Praise God, some of you look a lot different. <laughs> We won't go any further than that. Colossians chapter 2. <laughs> glory, 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 and glory. Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. Eternal training session. Holy Ghost Boot Camp and Officers Training School. Thank God we're not religious. Amen. Oh, if the world can just grab hold of that reality, that Jesus is never religious. You don't have to be religious if you're the creator. Hello? <laughs> In Colossians 2, verse 11. Let's speak this together. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your own trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped away the handwritings of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So let no one judge you in food or drink or regarding festival or new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward. Let no one cheat you of your reward. Why? Because you have a reward. It's called a righteous reward. You are rewarded for righteousness. These are righteous rewards. And he says, don't let anyone cheat you. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Let no one cheat you of your righteous reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and, had not, and not holding fast to the head <coughs> from whom all the body, <coughs> nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, you, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have a, an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. So he's explaining, listen, you can go through all of these forms and religious things and whatever, but it isn't going to help you in the indulgence of the flesh. The only way that you're going to overcome is the indwelling power of Christ Jesus, where you are willing to yield yourself over to him in cooperation with him in every area. Not according to the way your mind thinks, but according to the way the spirit thinks. There's a difference between living out of your head and living out of your spirit. It's like living out of your heart, unless your heart is contaminated. Amen? Now your heart is the character of your spirit. So the enemy wants to come and cheat you of your rewards of righteousness. Rewards of righteousness. Go to 2 John chapter 1. Oh, happy day.
Second John. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Verse, verse 4. Let's speak it. I rejoice greatly that I have found some of your children walking in truth as we receive commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. This love, this is love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment that, as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world and who do not confess Jesus as coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we worked for. Those are called righteous rewards by, uh, by you doing righteous works. He's saying, look, make sure, look to yourselves that we do not lose those things that we worked for, but that we may receive a what? A what? Full reward. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house, nor greet him. For he who greets him shares in his what? Evil deeds. So there's works of righteousness. So that there's an area of righteousness, which is righteous rewards and righteous works. And one of the things we don't want is a partial reward. We want a full reward. A full reward. That takes full cooperation. Full cooperation. Matthew 6. Righteous rewards, just in case you're wondering what today's title is. And we'll talk about some of these rewards. Of course, the greatest righteous reward is eternal life. Amen. Amen. You can't beat that reward. <laughs> now you just got to maintain a life of righteousness. To maintain eternal life. In Matthew 6 verse 19. Do not, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Where moth and rust destroy. And where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust destroys. And where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. In other words, out of your righteous works, out of your righteous life, righteous fruits, you are storing up your future in heaven. Does everybody understand that? Your future is built by righteous rewards also and righteous works. They are built up in heaven. You are laying up your future, what you're doing here. You are laying up a position for yourself in heaven when you go home of what you're doing here. See, people are so caught up in just the temporary, they lose sight of the eternal. Everything we do here is recorded. In Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. God grants repentance. He grants it. Anything that's not under the blood of Christ, that is displeasing to God, will be judged against us. So I encourage everyone to repent as quick as possible. And if you truly are connected to his presence, his love, and his power, and the anointing, you are looking for conviction. You're not waiting for conviction. You look for it. Why? Because you don't want anything to interfere. If you are waiting to be convicted, then it's too late. You need to repent. <laughs> You look for conviction in every area of your life. 
in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Come on, read it with me. Condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So we know that this condemnation, which is associated with judgment, will not be granted to them who walk according to the Spirit. But if you're walking according to the flesh, you can bet your sweet bippy you're going to get judged by God. In fact, what you sow is what you reap. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. I don't know what a sweet bippy is, but anyways. <laughs> it always reminds me of one of those binkies. Well, I guess that doesn't mean it. Anyways, praise God. Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen in this place. Verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that and it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, an account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the what? Righteous requirement. So there is a requirement. There's a requirement to produce righteous rewards. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So only those who are in the spirit can, be, can please God. Again, there's a righteous requirement. What is it? To walk according to the spirit of God, which causes us to manifest fruits of righteousness. Now, what is righteousness? Righteousness is to act according to the divine moral laws in justice and honesty. Righteousness is to act according to the divine moral laws in justice and honesty. It is a behavior. It is an attitude. It is a motive. Righteous behavior, righteous attitude, righteous motive, righteous desire. Why? Because what is righteousness? It's acting according to the divine moral laws and justice and honesty, according to God. Again, it's a behavior, it's an attitude, it's a motive, it's a desire, it's a thought, it's a word. Here's a kicker. Are you ready for this? It's a decision. That is the big one. Your decisions, righteous decisions. Decisions that, are, that aligns with Christ's character. You're pleasing the Father. According, you know, again, this cannot be accomplished until the indwelling Christ of the Holy Spirit and power, truth, and presence has our cooperation. Cooperation of heart, cooperation of mind, and cooperation of will. Do I need to repeat that? So you got it. Again, a behavior, attitude, motive, desire, and thought, word, or decision that aligns with Christ's character, pleasing to the Father, cannot be accomplished until the indwelling Christ of the Holy Spirit, power, truth, and presence has our cooperation of our heart and mind and will. Won't happen. So one of the things we want to be sensitive of is making every one of our decisions we want to line up to that is pleasing to God. If it's a decision not pleasing to God, if it's a reaction that's not pleasing to God, then it's not a righteous decision. Amen. Amen. And John 15. John 15.
Hallelujah. Here's a requirement. What does it say in verse 4? Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Again, that's got to be the indwelling. And that's got to be full cooperation. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. This is our fruits of righteousness. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be much. my disciples, and the world may see you. The Father is glorified when we produce righteous fruits of works, conduct, and decisions. He's glorified. When we produce righteous fruits of works, conduct, and decision. In Philippians 1, righteous rewards. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 3. In verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ, of Jesus Christ. That takes cooperation, though. Just that it is right for me to think Think of this of you all, because I have you in my heart, and as much as both in my chains and in defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. In this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment that you may approve the things that are excellent. That you may what? Approve the things that are excellent. That means as a righteous decision. And that you may be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. In other words, we allow the Holy Spirit to complete the work of Christ's character in us, and we will be filled with fruits of righteousness. Remember, it's righteousness that please God. Many people don't know what righteousness is according to. And it's according to the way God sees things, not man. People are so concerned about man pleasing, but what about God pleasing? If all the politicians and governors and mayors and all of this other stuff would be considered more, be more concerned about how God sees things and the way man sees things, we'd have more of a righteous government. But we have a man in office now who's concerned about how God sees things. His name is Trump. And evil hates him. Evil always hates light. Always. So they lie. They do everything they can. They got nothing but big mouths, just like what the devil says. I mean, what the word says about the devil, you know. He comes as a what? Rain lion. That's why he's, he's an ant with a big microphone. And that's what happens with all of these individuals that are trying to move righteousness. It isn't about Trump himself. They don't even understand why they hate him. It's about the righteousness of God that's in him. And now they're trying to quote scriptures. The evil's trying to quote scriptures about our immigration when they need to read the rest of them, knowing that they're on their way to hell. <laughs> it's incredible that be, I crack up about it. They don't even know what the scriptures mean. Anyway, so they try to manipulate, but that's how the devil operates. He'll take a scripture and twist it to gain advantage over something, you know. Go to Hebrews 12. <laughs> Hebrews 12. 
I mean, we are in such a time of the battle between righteousness and evil. Now, you got to remember, so many people think that good is good. But there's a difference between good and righteousness. You may be a good person, but are you a righteous one? There's a difference. There's a lot of good people, but there's not many righteous. Because they don't have the indwelling of Christ. So they live by the revelation of the wisdom and knowledge of the world. It's like people who are in think tanks. They try to solve all the problems, but they can only do it according to carnality. And they really don't solve anything. They just postpone it. Only Christ solves everything. Amen? And Hebrews chapter 12. Let's speak it for consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. For you have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons and daughters. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For the son is there whom a father does not chasten. But if you are without chastening, or of which all have partakers, then you are what? Illegitimate and not sons or daughters. Furthermore, we have had... Human fathers who have corrected us and we paid them respect, shall we now much more readily and be subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seem best to them. But he for our profit, we may be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of what? Righteousness to those who have been trained by it. This is so powerful. So chastening is a divine adjustment to live out of the spirit and not out of the unconverted soul or out of the flesh. It is a chastening. It is an adjustment. So as you and I live out of the spirit, we are living out of the character of Christ. So you on, must understand that God is going to correct us. Amen. He's going to put us back on course. Why? So we bear fruits of righteousness. There may be decisions that we made that were displeasing to him. He'll correct that. He'll chasten us. Again, you can expect chastening. You expect it. You receive it. You thank him for it. Thank you for the correction, Lord. Thank you for the rebuke. It doesn't mean we're bad. It means we got deceived. So many people take it so personally in the area where I'm bad, I'm never going to be able to do this, then, whatever. That's got nothing to do with it. God is just trying to get us on course. You accept the counsel, correction, and direction, and chastening of the Lord. Why? Because it's an adjustment. It's an adjustment to get us in divine order. Because many times our decisions have made us or caused us to move out of divine order. We've made decisions that have connected us to a place that has moved us out of order. We've hurt people by certain decisions. Well, you repent. Amen? Amen? We've bought hurt on our own self by decisions. We must forgive. It's a gift from God. <laughs> forgive. So you repent, you forgive, and you move on. You let God, you learn from our chastening. That's why the word says, count it all joy when you fall into trials and tribulations. Why? Because those are corrections and chastenings of the Lord. Take it all as joy. Why? Because God's trying to get us into place and position. Amen? He's not, believe me, he's not doing it to harm us. 
He's doing it to correct us. Because he knows that if we stay on that course, the enemy is going to take us out. And he doesn't want that to happen. So chastening, we've got to look at it now as a divine adjustment from God. It's a divine intervention from God. Nobody likes to be corrected, but you should like to be corrected. Because if you're wrong, you're wrong. Amen? And don't fight to be right. <laughs> That's pride. Then you're just fighting flesh over flesh. And my flesh is bigger than your flesh. You know, that's all it is. So don't fight to be right. You fight for God's presence. The word says, depart from evil. Don't touch anything that's unclean. Why? Because it's not going to produce righteous fruits. Amen? Especially in your thoughts. Remember, what is righteousness? It's the act according to the divine nature of God Almighty. His moral laws. It's what he approves of. In, in Psalm 18. In verse 20. And don't be a baby when you don't get what you want. Don't grumble and complain because you ain't going to get it. <laughs> Maybe because uh, you haven't earned the reward of righteousness yet. Amen? Amen? Verse 20. Let's speak it. The Lord rewarded me according to my what? Woohoo! According to my what? Right. Righteousness, which is my behavior, my attitude, my motive, my desires, my thoughts, my words, and my decisions that lined up according to Christ's character. So he rewards. He loves to reward us. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and I have not, not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. Rewarded me according to my righteous acts. Again, of decisions and acts and attitude and behavior. He rewards us. 2 Corinthians 5. Second Corinthians 5. Righteous rewards. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Verse 16. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. Let's speak it together. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though now we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things pass away, and behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. 
For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the what? The righteousness of God in him, that we might become the righteousness of God. Everyone say, I'm the righteousness of God. Amen. See, there's a difference. Why are, we're also the righteousness of God because we are eating from the tree of righteousness, which is the tree of life. But when you stop eating from the tree of righteousness or the tree of life, you begin to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the fruits of righteousness are no longer being produced. The fruits of carnality are. The fruits of self. The fruits of oppression. The fruits of fear. The fruits of lust. And everything else. Stay away from people, places, and things that do not promote works, behavior, or decisions of righteousness. Stay away. Because, because the righteousness of, we are the righteousness of God as his temple. We are. In Psalm 35. Again, the greatest reward of producing fruits of righteousness is eternal life. Amen? But there are other ones. There are many of them, to be honest with you. But there's a few of them that I would like to specifically point out this morning. In Psalm 35 and verse 22. Psalm 35 and verse 22. Here is a righteous reward. Is everybody there? Psalm 35, verse 22. This you have seen, O Lord. Do not keep silent. O Lord, do not be far from me. Stir up yourself and awake to my what? Vindication. To my cause, my God, my Lord. Vindicate me, O Lord, according to your righteousness. Now, wait a minute. You're right. He's, we're saying, you got to understand this. If we are the righteousness of God, we're asking him to vindicate us according to the righteousness of God that's in us. Amen. So a, re, uh, a righteous reward is God brings you vindication. Amen. Vindicate me, O Lord, according to uh, my God, according to your righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, oh, ah, so we would have it. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion, who rejoice at my hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor, who exalt themselves against me. What does God do? He rewards us with vindication. Vindication. That's what the Lord says, touch not my anointed People don't realize how many things have come upon them because of the things that they've done. It may not happen today, but I've seen it happen, and it may take months, weeks, could take two weeks. It could take months, and it can take years. But I've seen it happen. I've seen many people it happened to who come against God's servants. Hallelujah. Psalm 15. Somebody may have deceived you and got you caught up in a debt. You can claim vindication by your righteous, for as one of your righteous rewards. Does everybody understand it? You might want to claim stupidity first, and then, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> that's called repent. <laughs> God is faithful. Remember, he's with us, not against us. Psalm 15. Is everybody there? We're going to start from the beginning. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. 
He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be what? Moved. What a reward to never be moved. Never be moved. That is a great reward. That God will sustain you. He'll uphold you. Amen? Amen. You are able to overcome all trials and tribulations and challenges and t attacks and disappointments. You will overcome them because you bear the fruits of righteousness. In Psalm 11, Psalm 11, verse 4, let's speak it. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence, his soul hates. Upon the wicked he will rain coals, fire and brimstone and burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous, he loves righteousness, his continent upholds the what? The upright, what a reward, his continence. That is a reward of righteousness. His continence upholds us. He dresses us with his presence, his peace, his joy, his righteousness. That is a reward. In 1 Peter chapter 3. The more consistent we are, the better. God will not trust unconsistency. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 8. Let's speak it. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tender hearted. Be what? Courteous. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on contrary blessing. Know that you were called to this, that you may inherit a what? But anybody want to inherit a blessing? Produce the fruits of righteousness. That is a righteous reward. Verse 10. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. You want to know another reward? He answers your prayers. He does what? He answers prayers. It is a reward. Some people are wondering why they haven't gotten an answer in a long time. Maybe because they've gotten out of order. Maybe they're putting other things first before God. Maybe they put their money first and everything else, their jobs and everything else first, instead of putting God first. You know, when you really put God first, I can only share with you that he makes a way where there seems to be no way in job, in relationships, in health. He never interrupts himself. Never. Never. And I think that's the greatest deception. And people think that just, you know, way out of way of all kinds of things, uh, way out of order of all kinds of things. When God is trying to get us in divine order because he's trying to get something to us. And by getting, and every time he tries to get something to us, the enemy steals it because he has a right to come steal, kill, and destroy. Some people are waiting on healing. How do you know that you, because you're not producing the righteous requirements or producing the righteous fruit that God has held back your healing or answered prayer, whatever it may be. Maybe you're still relying on yourself and the world and not him. Maybe you're still relying on the world to provide for you instead of him. Maybe there's 
unrighteous decisions or decisions that may be, not be unrighteous, but they're not according to his will, which he calls unrighteous. Because if a decision is made out of time, it's not God's will. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 103. Maybe you haven't forgiven someone and you're still bitter. Maybe you still hold a fence. Maybe you're not consistent. Psalm 103. Is everybody there? Start at verse 1. What's the first word? Bless, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not his, all his benefits. Now, these are righteous rewards. <laughs> benefits are righteous rewards. Does everybody get it? Verse 3, what does he do? Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your what? Diseases who redeems our life from destruction, who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies our mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Wow. Re-righteous rewards. These are benefits. Forgiveness, healing. How about rescue? How about protection? How about mercies and grace? Renewing of your youth. Prosperity. Provision. All of these are rewards from the Lord. All of them. Why? Because of your righteous acts. Amen? Righteous decisions. Matthew 6. Righteous rewards. How about how you treat other people? Do unto others as you want them to do to you. Matthew 6 and verse 31. Is everybody there? Man, you're all quiet this morning. Everybody okay? Amen. <laughs> Therefore, do not what? Worry. worry. You all know worry is fear, right? <laughs> Do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all these things the heathens seek, I mean the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Uh-oh, here we go. But first seek the kingdom of God. It's amazing how many people erase the rest of it. And his righteousness. And all these benefits will be added to you. Does everybody get it? Without producing fruits of righteousness, making righteous decisions, these will be withheld from us. And everybody blames everybody else for why nothing's happening. It's because you have made a righteous decision or you've mistreated someone or you haven't repented or you're not acting in the works of righteousness. Does everybody get it? Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. When you bear righteous fruits, there are righteous rewards. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to close it. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation 22, verse 12. Oh, happy days. <laughs> Let's speak it together. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my what? Reward of what? Righteousness is with me. To give to everyone according to his works of righteousness. 
I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, which produces righteousness, and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are what? Dogs. Now, this is pretty amazing. Why would God say that there's dogs outside? What's the animal got? Because a dog is representation of a demonized individual. It's amazing how they have a slang now. Hey, dog, how you doing? Don't let nobody call you a dog. That means you're demonized. But the world speaks this language, and it brings a curse on a person. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexual immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. Why? Because are they, they're not fruits of righteousness. There's no reward then. I, Jesus, have sent my angels to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears us come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desire, desires, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. And if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life and from the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.